Happy New Year, everyone. I am Candice from mercyisnew.com, and I wanted to just share with you today a few things that God is teaching me. And um, a lot of you probably choose a word of the year. And this year, my word is behold. So God is reminding my heart and teaching my heart um, how to behold him more. And so the goal, the reason that I chose this word of the year is because I want him to teach me how to behold him more and behold my circumstances less. I want to be transformed into his image. And in order for that to happen, I need to behold him and not the things I see of this world. And so, um, I read a quote in a book called Women of the Word um, that says, We become what we behold. And that has just stuck with me and it has been in my mind. And I've been praying about it and thinking about it and just asking God to convict my heart and show me, Lord, what am I beholding that is not you? What am I beholding that is not of you? And so I'm just going to share with you five um, ways to uh, behold God more this year. So um, the first way that we can behold God in our daily lives is to um, have a daily dose of his word. Um, are you spending more time reading other things or doing other things than you are in his word? His word is where we're going to know him. It's where we're going to behold him. If we want to know more about God, we need to be in his word. So I want to share with you a quote from Women of the Word that says, There are really only two possibilities in this life. Be conformed to the image of God or be conformed to the pattern of this world. No doubt we want the former, but be warned. The word is living and active. It will conform you by dividing you. And in the dividing, miracle of miracles, it will render you whole. We become what we behold. I don't know about you, but I have much becoming to do. There is a vastness between what I am and what I ought to be, but it is a vastness able to be spanned by the mercy and grace of him whose face it is most needful for me to behold. In beholding God, we become like him. So make a faithful study of the one you want to imitate as a dearly loved child. Study everything that makes God wonderful and mimic to your heart's delight as the joyful expression of your reciprocal love for him. Respond as David did. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Psalm 27, 8. To the one that seeks him, the Lord is pleased to lift up his countenance, both now and forever. Study well the contours of his face. Let gazing on his loveliness touch your mind and heart and be transformed. So the first way we can behold God more in our everyday lives is by making sure we are spending time in his word. The second way that we can behold God more this year is by memorizing his word. So we want to read it. We want to study it. We want to know what it says. But then I want it in my mind. I want to be going about my day and not even have to pick up my Bible for it to be in my mind. I want God to bring those words forth in my mind when I need them in my daily life. And I do that by memorizing his word. So get you a spiral and write on it the verses that you want to memorize. Carry it around with you. Um, I try to look at mine and go over my verse a few times each morning when I'm um, sitting and reading my Bible and praying. And so um, right now I am memorizing Colossians 3.16 and this verse is really powerful for, um, for just teaching us about scripture memory and why we want to be memorizing his word. So it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. We want his word to dwell in us. And to do that, we need to be in his word. We need to be memorizing his word. Teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. So if we want to know God more, if we want to behold God more than we behold our circumstances, we need to be 
beholding him through his word, studying it, memorizing it. Okay, the third way we can behold God is to write his word. So we're going to read it, we're going to study it, we're going to memorize it, we're going to write it. Some of you have asked um, what it looks like to write the word and what that even means. And so I have a lot of free plans at uh, my blog at mercyisnew.com, but it's really simple. It's so simple, yet it's such a wonderful discipline for strengthening our faith and strengthening our knowledge of the word. So I have a journal. I have just a blank journal um, with um, lines in it. And then I just write out his word, word by word. This is not my prayer. This is not my paraphrasing. This is the actual word of God. I'm writing it, and I usually just do a verse or two every morning. And this helps me to slow down and focus on his word. Sometimes we read a, um, we read a passage so quickly that we don't even remember what the beginning of the passage says. So take a small chunk of God's word and write it down. Okay, as you write, ask God to teach you and minister to your heart and speak to you and convict you and encourage you. God's word can do all those things for us. So writing the word um, can help us to behold God more this year. Okay, the fourth way to behold God more this year is to turn up the praise music. Turn it on, turn it up sing along, worship God in your daily life. There are more ways to worship God other than just music, but as a musician, music really ministers to my soul. And sometimes there are songs that come on that you just can't help but praise God when they come on. And that automatically and begins that transformation process. It turns our mind from ourselves and whatever we're doing, and it helps us to behold God. Okay, so the fifth way that we can behold God more in our daily lives is to cultivate gratitude. When we think about the things we're grateful for, when we take the time to write them down, uh, for me personally, I can't help but um, have my thoughts turn to God because I know that God is the giver of all good gifts. So when I look around me and I see the things that I'm thankful for, the big things, the small things, I uh, my eyes and my mind are turned to God. You know, even even just looking at the little things like, God, thank you for waking me up today. Thank you for this warm bed. Thank you for my home. Thank you for the beautiful snow. Thank you for your beautiful creation. Um, thank you for, um, thank you for your word. Thank you for a good book that I'm reading. Even the little things, when we, um, when we remember what we're thankful for, it reminds us to be thankful to God and who we should be thankful too, because he has given us all these blessings. So those are just five really simple ways for us to behold God more this year. And I say simple because they're easy to do and it's not, it doesn't take rocket science to figure them out, but it takes discipline. It takes discipline and it takes faith and it takes trust and it takes um, setting aside what we may think is important in our day and saying, you know what, God, your word is more important to me than this to-do list or, um, you know, whatever, whatever we have on our plate. Um, that's not to say we don't have a to-do list, but that's to say, remember what is most important. Um, go over your priorities. And if you want to know God more, if you want to behold him more this year, then we've got to take time and spend it in his word. So, um, those are just some things God is teaching me. And I, he, um, showed me the verse in Psalm 119 that is kind of my theme verse for this year. It says, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. So I just challenge you to make that your prayer this year. That's Psalm 119 verse 18. And just every day as you go about your day, pray and ask God, open my eyes. We need him to open our eyes and we need the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, in our lives daily to behold him, to see the goodness of God, to know him more by reading and studying his word. So I hope that y'all are having a great new year and I will talk to you later. Bye.